Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out the radio version of the show every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern on WDJY 99.1 in Atlanta. We also air on a podcasting network in Los Angeles called the 405 Media. There's a TV version of the show that airs on KMVT 15 in Silicon Valley at 8 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday nights. Both versions of the show air in other states. For these show times plus past episodes, please visit the show's website at buildingthefutureshow.com. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com. Join me at the 10th Annual Media Excellence Awards on January 18th in Beverly Hills, California. The attendees and I will be celebrating innovation and leadership in technology and entertainment. There are 20 award categories with 1,000 nominees. These awards honor those who are creating groundbreaking technology to better our lives and celebrate the hard work, determination, and brilliance in the leadership within the companies which create the new world we live in today. I will be recording nominees and winners at the awards. For tickets and more information, go to MediaXAwards.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Susan Miller. She's a best-selling author, web publisher, businesswoman, and she founded her website, Astrology Zone, back in December 95. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm just so excited to be on your show. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. (laughs) I, when I first kind of got introduced to you, I, uh, well, digitally introduced to you, I should say, (laughs) I was like, wow, you're doing a ton of stuff in a space that isn't really known for kind of being very tech savvy. But before we kind of get into everything that you're involved in, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. I grew up in the heart of Manhattan on the Upper East Side. My my grandparents um, on both sides, the German side and the Italian side, settled in Little Italy and down, you know, in Lower Manhattan. But then it was a little too crowded down there. So my grandfather on my father's side moved up to 75th and 2nd okay and um the horse was downstairs where a garage would normally be <laughs> and uh that <laughs> that's awesome. seven children three wow. in a bed <laughs> wow. that's what they tell me i said how did you sleep if there were three in a bed not very much <laughs> yeah fair enough Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but things things were good he went from a selling lemons and limes on a pack on his back at 16 saying Lamoni Lamoni and women would throw quarters out the window and he would run upstairs and give them their fruit and then he had a push cart that he had enough you know for to to afford that and then he opened a, a a really nice store in Greenbaum Butcher's Cellar on Very the corner good. of 75th and 2nd uh, and I, they, the cellar was beautifully painted, clean, and he kept saving his money. And like most Italian families, they bought a, a brownstone. And the whole family, all the kids, everybody put in the money, the grandparents, everybody, and the store was downstairs. Very cool. And uh, the store was 81 years there. My wow. father took it over. My father's gone. My uncle's gone, the, the two that ran it after my grandpa passed. But... It, we lived over the store. That's, That's why cool. I'm a good cook. I just run downstairs. What do I need? I need asparagus and parsley. And you can just try stuff too, <laughs> right? <laughs> I just run downstairs. The whole idea of buying for the week was an anathema to me. It, you know, you you bought for the day. Sure, sure. And my father would go to Hunts Point every morning at 4 a.m. to get wow. in before the big refrigerator trucks would show up. And I went with him over a five-year period to photograph in black and white what he was doing. He said, why are you so interested in this? I said, how could I not be sure. seeing that, you know, the, the string beans and broccoli and potatoes and sweet potato, everything coming off those big trucks and, you know, just fresh from the farm as far, you know, as fast as they could get it to Hunts Point. You know, it was fascinating. And, and the... And how everybody paid cash and uh, big wads of it, you know, but they'd have to have small bills. That's why there were such big wads. And the, the prices of the produce would change every day. Interesting. And I just, I couldn't get enough of it. My father would say, feel these string beans. Close your eyes. They should be as soft as a baby's skin. You know, and he would, he would tell me different things. 
I think some people don't like fruits and vegetables because they don't know how to buy the best. Interesting. Once you get really wonderful sure. fruit and vegetables, you'll eat it all the time. It's heaven. No, that's it's fair. nature's gift. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, and like just even just like his passion for that stuff, right? Like, oh is, yeah, is really cool. My father was the buyer, and my uncle was the uh, accountant. He was a certified public accountant, and so he kept the books for the store. And um, but my father would come back to the store, and in the morning, sit on a milk box and go through like the spinach. And he would take off every leaf that was damaged and wash wow. it in the back. And with the grapes, if any grape had fallen off, he had a little manicure scissors and he would cut that little stem that didn't have a grape on it. I mean, everything, wow. the detail. Yeah, yeah. And I'm very detailed. And I think, you know, it comes from my pet. My mother was detailed. She taught me astrology. Okay. Um, and every single degree counts the tiniest little degree. So like for twins, nobody has the same chart. Nobody. In this whole world, your chart will never be duplicated. So that that attention to detail, um, it's a good thing if, if you like detail. I love detail. I, I love words. I love... I listen to commercials and wonder how it got off the drawing board. Why did they use that word? Why, you know? <laughs> sure. No, that's great. And... and you know, different. I I just can't help it. I can't no, I think that's great. I'm that's sitting here listening. You know, um, I usually have the TV on when I'm working, and I think I'm not listening. But if an important news story comes on, I look up, and sure. I think I'm not listening. But I concentrate really, really well. So um, that no, helps that's... in my field. <laughs> no, that's great. So you kind of have an interesting journey into kind of how you got into kind of. Mm-hmm. founding Astrology Zone 21 years or oh, 20, almost 22 years ago now. Um, Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, that, congrats. Years. That's that's for a website, <laughs> that's like well, an you eternity, know, right? I, like first of all, yeah, nobody says they're going to be an astrologer when they grow up. As a matter of fact, nobody believes in astrology until they start learning it. Interesting. Um, you know, because it's counterintuitive. How could you look at a piece of paper and know... Uh, you know, what trends are coming up for the future. And by the way, astrology is not predestination. There's so much misinformation out there. You know, during the election, the producers would say, who's going to win? I'm like, I have no idea. (laughs) No idea. We have to vote. I would have been buying lottery tickets Let me put that right out there. I have no idea. I can tell you which which talents each candidate has, and you're going to vote, and it means you're hiring, quote-unquote, that sure, person. Sure. So who impresses you, and what qualities are, do you prize? You know, so, um, yeah, there's no predestination. There's free will. But I can tell you when to act, when to hold back, when to ask questions, when, um, you know, to re- you'll probably have to negotiate a bit longer when that beautiful house will come up, I can tell you when opportunity is coming. Now, you can either choose to take it or not, or on any scale you want. Sure. For example, Leo is going to have fabulous real estate aspects. But if they, if they say, I love my home, I don't want to move, they don't have to. Sure. They could I gotcha. paint a few rooms or buy new linens or buy a piece of furniture that really makes the room. They could renovate. They could do it on any scale. They may even get a great buy in a flea market, you know, um, a beautiful desk. You know, so, you know, when you're lucky, you're lucky, and you can have it on any scale you want. Sure. No, I I think that's really great. But walk us through kind of how you kind of, eventually actually became an astrologist and kind of because you you had kind of an interesting journey to get there well I was born with a birth defect that was really pretty bad and nobody knew what it was okay and even to this day when a doctor doesn't know what's wrong with you it's your fault you're psychosomatic you're crazy there's something wrong with you you should see a psychiatrist but my leg would swell up and I would be in agony uh, you know, it, 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 I would know the exact moment when it would happen. I would be walking or standing by the stove or whatever, and I would feel like this volume of thick liquid, like chocolate syrup, would fall into my knee. Wow. And I'd be in so much pain. I would, I would try to hop over to a bed and uh, put a pillow under the knee, and I'd be there for eight weeks. 
Wow. You know, and the swelling would finally go down, and then I would gently put the foot on the floor, and and then I'd walk as if nothing had happened. The problem is doctors couldn't see me during an attack. Right. You know, cause, Interesting. You know, uh, so when I was well, I was really well. X-rays didn't show anything. And they just thought I was making the whole thing up to stay out of school. I would be out eight weeks at a time, but usually only once a year. And my mother began noticing that whenever I got happy and excited, (laughs) like being excited for Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or my birthday, whatever it was, it usually coincided with an event like that. I mean, Christmas after Christmas, I'd wake up sick. Um, it, It just, and I remember her saying to my father, what kind of illness only strikes on holidays? This is insane. And and uh, no child would want to be sick sure. on, on their happiest days. Yep. So she knew the doctors had no idea what they were doing. So my father was asking all the nurses who came in the store and all the doctors, I need a name of a great doctor. And uh, he was collecting names. And I, I had my mother had said she knew astrology. She never did consultations, ever. Okay. She said, don't tell people you know this. It's an, an enormous advantage. But don't tell people you know this because it's not understood and, and you may be criticized. Who knows? I mean, in her day, you couldn't say you loved astrology. Sure. So, um, but I wanted to learn. Okay. And um, this illness reached exactly when she said it was 13 and 11 months when I got an uh, attack that wasn't going away. And uh, she said, Susie, we can't keep going through this. We have to find someone. So I kind of nodded and she said, well, your father found the name of uh, the protege to the chief of staff, the hospital for joint diseases. So we're going to, you know, take an ambulance and see him. And he was the only doctor that didn't criticize me, didn't scream at me. Wow. He was gentle with me. He didn't. He wasn't rough when he handled the leg. And he was honest. I have no idea what's wrong with you. So Which you appreciate, we, right? Like if somebody oh, really doesn't know, totally. tell me. <laughs> you know, in every field, we appreciate honesty. Even if you're working with another company and they screw up, if they say, you know, we made a mistake. Sure. And everybody makes mistakes. You, you want to help them then. You want, you know, you're a team. You know, so in that case, he said, I have no idea. We'll put you in the hospital a week. And we'll do lots of tests. And maybe we could get to the answer. Sure. And, uh, and I had been there a few days. And my mother was standing near the bed. She was always such a supporter. And I said, Mom, um, Tuesday's going to be the worst day of my life. She said, oh, my gosh, why would you say that? Today's Thursday. Why would you say that? I said, I have no idea. And I am not psychic. I am okay. not. But I knew like I knew my name that Tuesday was going to be the worst day of my life. Interesting. So the doctor comes in, and uh, I think it was Wednesday, actually. And he said, uh, "We all the tests are coming up zero. We don't know. We have to go in. I said, okay, tomorrow? He said, I can't get an operating room until Tuesday. And my mother kind of looked at me, but I was very calm. And he said, what just happened? <laughs> she just said this and this. He said, do you want me to change the day? I said, no, it's part of my destiny. Interesting. No, fine. During that operation, uh, see, he thought it was cartilage, and I kept saying it's not bone. Uh, even though I was only 14, I knew the difference between bone and liquid. Sure. I said it's thick, like uh, chocolate syrup. It turned out I was bleeding internally. What's the closest thing to blood? <laughs> chocolate syrup. Interesting. And, yeah, okay. And, the veins and arteries were running through muscle, wrapped around nerves. They were all malformed. They uh, vanished under pressure. They literally turned to tissue paper and vanished and disappeared. A true, real horror for a surgeon. There was nothing to, to tie off. I just kept bleeding. They were giving me transfusions as fast as they could. They even had a conference, he said, in the operating room. And he told me the names, and I said, wait a minute, those doctors, their names are on buildings. He said, oh, yeah, you had the best. (laughs) And they had to tourniquet the lower part of the leg so hard. I think with that plastic stuff, like when you buy reams of paper, you know, and you're trying to saw through it, the scissors won't cut it, you have to use a knife. They were so tight. And it, they knew it would damage the nerves. So when I woke up, I had no feeling from the knee down. Wow. I had a drop foot. 
But you know what? I was not angry at my doctor. I just kind of nodded. I said, well, this is part of my destiny, you know. You have to accept what's there. I knew my doctor was trying so hard. I was to be in that hospital a full 11 months straight, uh, different surgeries. And then uh, in 1992, I kept breaking the thigh bone, and it would take two years to heal. And by then I had little tiny children. I said, I can't live like this. Dr. Franco, you have to go in and put the steel in that bone. He said, you'll die on the table, Susan. I said, I know. I saw my lawyer. I just finished, you know, correcting my will. I made a few changes. My mother said she'd take care of my children if something happened to me. I'm ready. And you know what? It was the best decision I ever made. Now, I did die on the table. Oh, God. But they did bring me back. In my life, I've had 40 blood transfusions. I don't wow. want any more. I just don't. I don't want any more. No, fair, no more fair crisis enough. for yeah. me. No more. I've had enough of this. But they got the steel in, and I had to stay home for a whole year wow, to wait great. for the bone to grow around the steel. So in a way, I was under house arrest. I could not go out even once. Because he said to me, I'll never forget this. He said, I'm going to say something, and you have to listen to me. If you fall, you die. If you fall, you die. Are you listening? I said, yes. He said, that's why you cannot leave the house. If you fall down, that bone's going to crack and we can't go in again. If you fall, you die. I said, okay, got it, got it. (laughs) So I stayed home an entire year. Wow. And the first time I went out, I remember there were three friends, and we went to the rainbow room. Okay. And uh, it was just so nice. Uh, It was the drinks area before the Rainbow Room destroyed it. Okay. You know, they gutted it. It was beautiful then. And you could see the Empire State Building and the water and everything and up high. And the girls went to get the coats, but one stayed with me, and I started to cry. And she said, are you in pain? What's wrong, Susan? And I said, no, 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 I'm not in pain. I never thought I'd see such beauty again. This was my first time out. And it's so exciting to be with other people. I don't know why eating with other people (laughs) is so exciting to this day. But it is. It's so nice. And um, I was just having such a good time. I just and was so overwhelmed by the beauty of the city of New York from those windows and the sparkling lights that look like a million diamonds. And I, I just... You know, and I, I, I will never forget that. And the, the joy of eating in restaurants, I, <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> sure. no, I mean, good. people I... say, Susie, it's an everyday thing. And I said, yeah, not for me. It's always special. And I eat out a lot, but it's... But I always want a restaurant with white tablecloths. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> makes fun of me. I don't ask about the food. I say, does it have white tablecloths? I love white tablecloths. Well, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Oh. But um, it was... During this period that I had to, after the year in the hospital, I had to go through three years of physical therapy every day. I mm-hmm. mean, they had to get that nerve back. And he said, you're only 14 or 15 by then. We can get this back, but you have to, like, really do this. So forget about attending high school. You'll do homeschool. The Board of Education works with kids like that. There was no Internet yet. I know sure. my children look at me, Little House on the Prairie, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> There really was a time you'd go to the library, the card catalog, and everything. Sure. So, um, <laughs> but you, um, I did get well, and I did teach myself high school, and I, um, I took the regents' exams, the PSATs and the SATs, and got into NYU. I had to be near the hospital, so NYU was near. I, they wanted to do a little bit more physical therapy. I got into college at 16 sure. and a half, and then wow. I graduated at 20. And my father said, when this ordeal is over, you're going to have to have a job. I said, Daddy, you can say that again. And he said, well, if you major in business, <laughs> you'll always work. You'll never have to worry. Even in a recession, you'll always work. And that appealed to me. But then I went from junior high to college, and you didn't have that social stuff, although my friends say, you really didn't miss anything. You missed the mean girl. <laughs> but I didn't go through it, and um, the boys wouldn't talk to me. They thought I was there to get married, and no one would give me their phone number. Nobody invited me in their study group in the library. Wow. And if you don't have a study group, you're going to have trouble. 
and uh, and 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 in between classes, everybody played chess at NYU. Okay. Everybody, and if nobody wanted to play chess with you, you were sort of an outcast. So I decided to run for office, and I would stand in front of the three elevators that went to the classes and hand out. You know, pieces of paper as Xerox on blue paper, and I <laughs> said, "Vote for me! Vote for me! This is my platform. Vote for me!" And that was a pretty good platform. I said, "Well, could you add anything? I mean, I'll I'll listen to any advice you have." And I kept winning, and wow. I made lots of friends. And when I graduated, they put me in the Hall of Fame for student service. <laughs> Wow, that's I was awesome. on Dean's advisory, but listen, I was only to make friends and, sure. and to play chess with somebody and <laughs> learn to play it really well. That's probably the best thing I learned in college. No, that's so, awesome. Um, so, so walk you know, me... things always work out if you just you know think about it. You know. No, I, I I think that's great. I I love your whole kind of story, but walk and my us... leg works. My leg works. Oh, that's... Well, my mother, yeah, my, and then I, had, I should tell you that during this period, I had a brace up to, you know, before I got to college, that those three years of physical therapy, I had a brace up to my hip and wow. two crutches. And I, you know, I couldn't walk, you know, and uh, I wanted to know if I'd ever look like anybody else, like everybody yeah, else. Enough, I wanted, yeah. I wanted, you know, I was young, I wanted to wear pretty dresses and travel and, you know, and sure. my whole life I couldn't travel because I never knew when an attack was coming. So I wanted my mom to teach me astrology, and she kept saying no. And I'm okay. like, why? She said, well, this is not a parlor game. This is serious stuff, and you'll never be any good unless you study for 12 years. And you're only 15. You don't know what 12 years is. I said, <laughs> Mama, where am I going to go? I live home, sure. up two flights of stairs. It's not gonna, I'm not going to sneak out. She said, you'll read for your friends before they're, you're ready. And I said, I don't have any friends. <laughs> Remember, this is that high school period where I was right. home. But I actually like being alone. I think any writer, perhaps listening to the show, might be nodding. In order to become a good writer, you have to be willing to be alone a lot. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like it, thinking and, you know, thinking about a lot of different concepts before I write. I think a lot. So um, she still wasn't going to do it. So one day she comes into the living room and says, did you write to Horoscope magazine? I thought, "Uh uh-oh, how did she find out? Okay. I said, yes, um, but that was seven months ago, and they never answered me. And she pulls out of her, her purse the... You know, it was about six by nine, you know, small magazine. Sure, sure. Um, and she said, there's a letter to the editor here. There's a section where you wrote to the editor-in-chief. And somebody wants to know if they're ever going to walk again. And it's your birthday, your time of birth, your city of birth, <laughs> and your entire story is exactly you. Sure. I said, well, you mean she answered me? She said, yeah, you're in the latest issue. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what did she say? She said, I don't know. Let's read it together. And in astrology, you don't say yes or no. You put the puzzle pieces together. Okay. Great family support, distinguished doctor, lives in a metropolitan city, access to great facilities, good aspects to health, okay. good attitude of the patient. You just put the formula together. And, uh, and at the end, the lady said, we think you're going to walk again. Wow. I said, Mama, uh, I have to, what are these words? She used astrological terms. I don't understand them. Why do you need them? You got your answer. And I looked at her and I smiled. She said, Oh no, you're going to check the editor in chief. I'm like, Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's she awesome. said, what am I going to do with you? You're never going to stop. You're just never going to stop asking me. I said, I know. You have to teach me. So she did. That's amazing. She did. So, and we studied for twelve years, and I I kept my promise to her. I never read outside the family as I was learning. She said, "You know, my my Italian uh, aunts and uncles were upstairs in the building, so I always had enough family members." She said, "But I have to be in the room when you're reading the chart. I want to look over your shoulder. I want to agree." I was very lucky to have such an excellent teacher. Sure, no, I I, I love that. So walk <laughs> me through how you basically. Put put astrology or started astrology zone. Put it online, and you've basically been doing this for twenty two well, years. And I think the thing that I want to make sure that we get to today is like you're 
you're this thing's gone kind of global for you. You really yeah. have embraced technology. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you're very much kind of a businesswoman. You know, you 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 have your own show. Um, <laughs> like you've done a ton yeah. of stuff. So, kind of walk me through how you how astrologyzone.com well, came started, to be. In, it started when I was nine years old, and I asked my mother what I'd be when I grew up, and she said, I was sitting, you know, with her, and she was staring at my chart, and I was nine, and I was at my grandma's house under the lilac tree, and she said, you're going to start by writing, and I said, nobody okay. in our family writes for a living. She said, I know, but you will, and I better work on your grammar. <laughs> Very practical family. <laughs> and she said, but when you get close to 40, you know, as it, you know, before, after 35, you will, uh, some newly invented form of communication. So new, we don't know what the name of it is yet. Okay. It will change the way you work and be the channel in which you make your okay. ultimate contribution to the world. I will never forget those words. Those are her exact words. And I was in shock. I'm like, what are you talking about? How do you stare at a piece of paper and know? She said, you have Aquarius on the midheaven at the very top where the 12 is on the clock. Aquarius is all newly invented forms. It involves science and, uh, and electricity, so somehow this is connected to electricity. But Aquarius is an air sign, so there's little dots or lines that are invisible that go through the air that have something to do with your work. Interesting. She was predicting the Internet. At the time, none of this made sense to me. I'm like, Mama, this is such a riddle. She said, I know, but it's going to have a big impact on your life. Sure. Interesting. So I had uh, I was an agent for commercial photographers. I was self employed. I was very well known in the advertising field. I had the, I took on brand new photographers and made them stars. I never wow. took somebody who was already a star because what fun is that? Sure. And I wanted to change somebody's life. If I can't help them, what's you know, I shouldn't take commission. Interesting. And I was uh, celebrating a Cheerio shot we had done for um, Sachi and Sachi. Okay. I was with the senior vice president but, and the writer, senior vice president both, and I was reading their charts as a thank you. By this time, my mother said, yes, you can read charts. And I never asked normal people to pay me. I always felt, if if I do this, I want big companies to pay me. I don't want individuals to pay me. It just doesn't feel right. So I read uh, their charts, and um, Scott, the creative director, said, my wife would love you. And I remember what I said. I said, I would love her. What does she do? And he <laughs> laughed. And he said, she, she's creative director of Warner Books. Wow. And uh, I want you to go over there. And Jackie and I got along great. She gave me books, which I loved to read. And she would give me galleys before the book came out. I was like, oh. In those days, you, you visited ad agencies. Now things sure. have gotten so cold, everybody looks on the computer. Yeah. But in those days, and I would have time in between appointments. So I'd run up to the Time Life building. At the time, it was on 50, 50th Street opposite the uh, Radio City Music Hall. And and we would have fun. And on her birthday, I would read her chart. And one day, I read her chart uh, for her birthday. And I said, by the way, you have to buy a lotto ticket. She said, you're off today, Susie. And I said, well, I don't make this up. And she said, no, I'm not going to buy a lotto ticket. It's it's. I said, I agree. Like, the chances of winning are so small, but yet I see you winning. Well, she forgot that one of the editors uh, had a child who was trying to beat the record of selling the most raffle tickets for the American Cancer Society. Okay. So he was begging everybody in her department to buy a few books, so everybody did. And Jackie bought four or five books, you know, and she didn't think anything of it, because when I was seeing her, she had already bought them. Sure. But I was saying lotto, she wasn't making the connection. And I said, I can, I can narrow this down the second two weeks in December is when you would win, from the 15th to the 31st. That's when you would win. So you don't have to buy that many tickets. And she said, no, I'm not going to do it. But on New Year's Eve, she came home after being out all night on December 31st. And the machine was blinking, her answering machine. And it said, congratulations, Jackie. You won first prize. You won the Porsche. Very cool. And she <laughs> called me up and said, there's a line of 30 editors outside my door that would like to say hello to you. Yeah, fair enough, right? I'm and sure. Said, it certainly raised my profile at Time Incorporated. 
But I said, look, you had the aspects. I don't have any aspects like that. I mean, it's very rare to have what you had. I had also said to her that she, at that meeting that we had in the China Grill, I remember where it was, that she would move. And she said, that's ridiculous. I love my apartment. And in New York, people tend to stay put. I said, yeah, but you're going to get a, an offer you can't refuse. And, uh, and and I know when you're going to move. It will be within three days of March 12th, two years from now, you know. So she writes all this down. And uh, she said, you know, this isn't going to work out. Nothing you're saying today is going to work out. Well, I forgot about what I said to her about the move. And the day she was moving, they were trying to get the desk out the door, but they were having trouble. So they said, just take out these empty drawers. And when she took out the middle drawer, there was an envelope stuck. And she said, hmm, what is this? And she pulls it out. And it was all my predictions. And it was March 12th that day. Wow. And she said, oh, my God. All right. I have a feeling about you. And she made an appointment with the webmaster. And I said, the webmaster of Time Warner? What do they want? She said, they don't know what they want. You tell them. I'm glad she said that. When you have an appointment with somebody special, you should come with several ideas, not just one, because if they don't like your idea, sure. look, you've got their attention, you know. So I went up there and met um, three men. I call them Harvard, Yale, and Dartmouth <laughs> in okay. suits, you know. Yeah. And um, they wanted something short for women every day. I wanted a big website. I said, I put my arm out straight out, you know, and I said, it should be big. We are Time Warner. I'm saying we. I'm not even hired yet. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, we must be big. We must really do something special. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy. And they said, well, what do you mean by big? I said, different parts of the site. And we should have a, something long once a month for men and women. This is not a female thing. Men sure. want to know what's coming up. Sure. And in the old days in Mesopotamia in 2500 B.C. when astrology was born, it was the province of the king to have uh, the mathematician in the nearby university. So it started with men being interested. And they wanted to know, what do I have to watch? Famine, approaching armies, uh, you know, different things. And um, so they're listening, and they said, well, you're going to write long once a month. No, web wisdom is you write short. I said, I know, but my instinct says no. People want to have detail. No, 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 not short. Short's bad. That's like a fortune cookie. No, 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 no. (laughs) And I said, uh, he said, well, what do you mean by long? I said, well, my manuscript will be 17,000 words a month. And they said, well, won't you get tired? I said, tired. Me tired? No, not not me. Now my my average... um, Manuscript is between 36,000 and 40,000 wow. words a month. So I actually built steam. And, um, and I, I have a summary so that you won't forget. I even said to Time Warner later, is it okay if I say everything a little bit twice? Because I really want the reader to remember. They said, oh, yes, 3M has all these studies about retention. Yes, say it twice. We actually <laughs> like that. I'm like, oh, my God, they're agreeing with me. So at that meeting, um, they they said, but I don't know why you do all this work. You know, seventeen thousand words. You know, once I we don't understand. We don't have that much money for you. And I put my elbows on the table with my palms facing the ceiling toward them, and I said, "Don't you see? This is my destiny." Interesting. And they're wow. like, "Oh my God!" They're all looking at each other, and they're very quiet. And the middle person, the big man, said, "Susan, time is not going to stand." in the way of your dream. We are going to let you do anything you want because you're so passionate about it. Wow. So that's, now, that was July 1995, so it took them a while. I mean, they were building Pathfinder, which was the whole yeah, yeah. I remember that. You know, area of, of you know, their website. and They should have really had a search engine with the name Pathfinder, but they sure. didn't. And they didn't have any e-commerce on there, and I think that's why it didn't work and it, for them. But it was, and and but for me, I was doing fine. And w- what was weird about it is when you went on the site, if you didn't know the URL and you put in astrology or horoscope, it would say not found oh, and bring you over to Lycos because the editors on Sports Illustrated, Time, and so forth didn't want an astrologer on their site, so they blocked it. Oh, wow. I said, can we, can we change this? They said, no. 
no, it's too political. We cannot touch this. I said, you know what? I'm having fun. And plus, I have my day job. You know, sure. I'm still okay. an agent. I'm just having fun. I don't care. The reason I got really big very fast is that Yahoo, Newsweek, all these different companies had top 10 websites. Remember, uh, it was all yeah, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I got to 5 million page views. Wow. Very quickly. That was, that's huge. And uh, well, that's now huge I'm at 105 now. million pages. But then they sure. said that was, and the head man who looked just like Skinner in X Files with the white shirt and the horn room <laughs> glasses, he came over to me, Larry, and he said, Susan, I, I drove you crazy. I was so, such a doubting Thomas. I gave you a very hard time. I said, well, no, it's okay. It's all right. He said, Susie, I've seen your figures. I said, are they good? He said, oh, yes. <laughs> I will never give you trouble again. Wow. And he never did. He kept his word. And um, and I didn't want to leave, you know, when they got involved with AOL, but they said AOL has their own astrologers. You have to leave. And at that point, it was uh, 1998, I couldn't find anybody who wanted to license material and pay me for my material. And I was really looking into the abyss, and I was in a crisis. Every door was slamming in my face. I had done a proposal in 100% rag, beautiful d design, in a lizard case that I got in Katie's paper ray that was beautiful. And um, everyone was saying no. Interesting. And uh, I went to Microsoft, and they wanted to see me, but it was a terrible meeting. They wanted me to cut everything to 100 words. And it was, uh, I came back to my hotel, I was coughing, I was sick, I had, I almost sound like I had whooping cough, <laughs> and my phone was ringing, and uh, it was somebody from Microsoft, a friend, and she said, how's the meeting go? And I said, oh, it was horrible, and I don't know what to do now, I have no options, because she was a really good friend, and she sure. reported directly to Gates, okay, and she said, who was at the meeting? And I told her, she said, oh, my God, this guy, he's going to be fired next week. Melissa, she has never had an, an original idea. And she's going through the names, and I'm like, oh, no, don't tell me this. <laughs> she's, and I said, where are you? And she said, I'm down in Cupertino, but I can't see you on this trip, but I'll see you in New York. And I hang up the phone, I call my office, and they said, we're having a blizzard. It's, it's really bad. They're closing the airports. So You've got to stay out there. And I'm thinking, Cupertino, Apple, they just wrote a story about me, and they were so good to me. So I called the, the top, top people. One of them was the gang of eight that Steve had sure. uh, chosen to bring yeah, back. Yeah. Wow. And I said, would you have dinner with me at, at uh, Post Rio, uh, this beautiful restaurant in San Francisco? I don't know how to drive, so I feel bad asking you to come. Oh, yeah, we love to drive, and we love Post Rio. Yes, we'll definitely meet you there. So I changed my ticket, and you know, for two days hence. And that week was supposed to be a very special week in my chart. And that's why I was surprised that everything was falling apart at Microsoft. How could it be when I had such sterling aspects by that Saturday? And I, you know, I flew out on Monday, had the meeting on Tuesday, thinking by Friday I'd have a letter of intent. <laughs> everything sure. would be solved. I had spectacular aspects. And nothing was working. But they said, you know, we want to have, oh, yeah, let's have dinner. Let's all meet because we had never met face to face. Sure. In those two days, you know, flying down, everybody's calling me from Apple. Can I come too? Can I come too? And I have this theory that you can count on your left hand how many people are good to you in this life. Interesting. And Apple was being good to me by writing that that piece about me and even putting my URL in and they had it on hot news in right. their website and I was totally a Mac devotee, you know, and they knew it and I had their I asked for their logo okay. for their front page. That's why I had written to them originally. I said, I don't like the way Steve Jobs is being treated in the press and I can change it. I know I'm just a little mouse, but I can change it. I, I think I could change everything. <laughs> and they were like, who is she? <laughs> and they sent me. I said, if every publisher has an Apple on their front page, if it truly is served, written, edited on a Mac, then there'll be Apples bouncing all over the net, and the and the press won't be so mean to Steve. Interesting. Like, okay, that makes perfect sense. All right, we're going to send you the logo, and sure enough, Time Warner put it up because I was sure. so passionate. And so, um, wow. fourteen people wanted to come to this meeting, and I'm thinking, okay, this dinner. This is going to cost me a fortune. I'll put it on Visa. I'll pay it off. I don't care. Sure. They're good to me. And I get there, and everybody, and not everybody had come yet, but the big 
person at the end, Dan Mauritius was there, and his secretary, and the writer, da- David Graham. And I'm at the other end, and I'm secretly giving the waiter my credit card, and he said, you're too late. They said, no, you're too late. I said, how could it be too late? Not everybody's here. They said, they paid yesterday. I'm like, wow. and Dan's laughing, and he's like, do you think Apple's going to make you pay for all 14 of us? Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm like, you keep getting it backwards. I'm supposed to be helping you. And <laughs> That's cool. And at that meeting, they asked about how things were going, and I said how hard it was. And they said, we're going to introduce you to InfoSeek. Sure. Can you go there? And I said, yeah, I didn't know how to drive, but I stay in decent hotels, and the concierge, you know, helps you. Sure. And uh, I thought, all right, I'll just hire a car, you know. And um, But then there was Caltrain and then a taxi. It was easy to get down there. And that meeting changed my life. So Apple intervened and That's... saved my sight because Disney came in with their pots and pans and bought InfoSeek the next month. Sure. And I'm thinking, how am I going to keep this negotiation going? Oh, my God, now I have a different crew here. I do... And I did. Wow. I did. And, and Time Warner had said to me, you must be off the site by December 31st, 1998. Wow. And... I had gone out, you know, to, in that dinner in February, and sure. and now I'm like thinking, okay, they flew to New York in uh, the people from Infosic in June to to talk to Time Warner, but then all talk stopped. Wow! And I'm like, oh my god! And we get to December and nobody's calling me. And I'm wondering, I don't even know what's going on. And, and time is asking me, what's happening? I said, I don't know. They're not answering the phone. And and that, I, I had just given up. I thought, all right, this was just a dream. It's very hard to negotiate with two companies, and sure. one is being bought by the other. And my daughter was doing her homework on the bed, and some kind of term paper. I was getting ready to go out. I had a black dress on, high heels. I could wear them at that time. And I was putting my earrings on, very pretty sparkly earrings. And Diana said, Mommy, um, a Kevin person from InfoSeek, from legal, he wants to talk to you? I'm like, oh, my God. I got on the phone and I said, you boys play it right up to the edge. He said, we're ready for you now. I said, but I have to put it through my legal. He said, I know. We'll tell time that it was our fault. Interesting. Don't worry. Wow. You'll come in, in in March, and uh, we'll be ready for you. There's a home for you here, and we're going to work out all the terms. And the terms were very fair and very good. I did go out to California and negotiate it, and it took a week. It was a 27-page contract, wow. and my my business partner that I worked with as an agent, uh, Evelyn, and I went out together. I paid her room. I said, oh. At this point, my whole life's at stake. Sure. I'll pay for your ticket. I'll pay for everything. Just come with me. Because we both negotiated the same way. And uh, w- what would happen is we would go there, and then they, we'd make changes, and they would flip it under our door at 2 o'clock in the morning. So Evie would stay up all night working on it. I would get up in the morning, and we'd have a quick breakfast. She'd tell me what what points we had to renegotiate. She'd join us. You know, maybe later, at, um, you know, after lunch. <laughs> sure. But luckily, I'm a morning person, but I'm also a <laughs> night person now. I'm everything. But uh, yeah, we worked it out, and uh, it was a very fair contract. People say things about Disney that are wrong. They listen. They listen. If you have a good point, they listen. It was funny. The first four pages were all about you can't hurt the Disney characters. I would never hurt little Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse or Pluto or any of them. Sure, <laughs> it sure. didn't fit, but the rest of it applied to me. But um, yeah, no. I mean, they, and I learned. I learned from both companies. From Time Warner, I learned information management and how you tell someone something is important. The the actual um, sequence of how you deliver news is important. And we would have philosophical discussions about that. At Disney, we talked about customer support and the importance of answering. Well, in their case, they wanted an answer within 24 hours. Now I'm on the sixth biggest website in the world. Wow. I'm generating 150 million pages a day, wow. and we're getting thousands of letters. So I had to hire a team quickly 
to keep up with their standard. Sure. And I did. I learned fast. I mean, you just get thrown into the deep end of sure. the pool, and you just have to start swimming. No, I, but we I, did. I think yeah. that's really good advice, right? Because and and you have very much stayed up with technology. You, you have I love apps. technology. You have well, my mother said. Go to new technology with that Aquarius on the Midheaven. Sure. Even if you're scared of it, go forward. But I love it. I mean, my own children are better. Like when I bought <laughs> Diana a watch, and they said it could hold 40,000 songs, and she is a producer in Hollywood for right. the James Corden show, and she Very needs cool. to listen to those songs when she runs. And then they said, we'll set it up for you. And she looked at the man and said, no, the idea is that you learn the whole yeah, idea yeah, of working with Apple is you do it yourself. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, the genes got stronger with my Oh, children. I think that's great. They, uh, yeah, I never have to read a guidebook with the kids around. They, they know it. And, um, you know, so I, I am on Alexa. And so, all you have to say is, Alexa, little dot, she kind of looks like a spaceship. Open Astrology Zone. She says, okay, and I'm ready. What sign are you? And you say, um, I am Leo. I would like a, um, I would like today's horoscope. And then she tells you. And then you could say again, keep astrology zone open. I'm Leo. I want tomorrow's horoscope. And then she gives it to you. And it's, she reads it to you. It's really cute. I love it. It's just so much fun. So we're, we're kind of, well, there's maybe about eight minutes left in the show. And I, I really want to also cover all the other stuff that you're doing quickly. Like, you write for a bunch of magazines kind of throughout yes, the world. Yes, I do. Well, I mean, be, to cover my crack habit, which is <laughs> the Internet. Sure. I'm <laughs> I right mean, there with having you. a website it. is like having a child. You better have enough money coming in because what kills a business faster than anything else is running out of cash. You sure. have to have money coming in, and you have to have lines of credit and work with the bank because not everybody's going to pay you when you think they're going to pay you. And uh, so I write for Vogue Japan, W Korea, Tempo wow. in Turkey, Claudia Brazil, Amica Italy, Esmo to Spain, El Pais newspapers all through South America and Spain, uh, Vogue China, and Vogue Germany. Wow. I was writing for In Style, um, which is a Time Incorporated magazine, but they're going through a lot of changes right now. Sure. So when my contract ended, they said no contributing editors are going to be with us. We're trying to make our balance sheet very tight. Sure. So I'm taking a rest from an American magazine, but would love to join one. Sure. You know, keeping my eye open. And um, my app is up for an award yes, uh, for, that's the mo great. for the Media Excellence Awards, January. 18th. I'm a finalist in several categories. I know. Congrats. And That's I, awesome. And we get <laughs> I to can't meet believe person. it. I'm just delirious. And uh, and they're having their 10th anniversary, so they're doing yep. a very big event, a black a black tie red carpet event, which Hollywood does so well. Of course, yeah. And um, <laughs> it, it, that award is like the Academy Awards, and so it's January 18th. Um, I'm one of several finalists, so I have to find out. I released an app in Istanbul for Turkey. I have a partner in Turkey who does all the, you know, oversees the translations. And uh, he's up for an award, too. And I said, hey, I've been, I've been on the Internet 22 years, and I'm up for an award. You're up six months. We, we released it in July, and you're already up for an award. Ilhan, you're, you're really lucky. He's laughing. He's I'm thinking of coming to the U.S. for that. And he, he's trying to work it out. Sure. And uh, I'm also up for a Regulus Award. Regulus is the brightest star in the sky. Wow. And uh, there's a big convention in May okay. called the United Astrology Conference in Chicago, right in the middle of Chicago, you know, with sidewalks. You can go out and, you know, you never want to go to a convention that's in the boonies where you're kind of isolated. So this is nice. And the three big organizations come together, the National Council for Geocosmic Research, the American Federation of Astrologers, and the International Society of Astrologic Research. That last one is the one that accredited me as an accredited astrologer. So, um, you know, I'm going to go to that and, sure. uh, and the awards dinners in May. Oh, gosh. No, I think that's crossed, awesome. And, you know? and you also... And you also have a, a year ahead kind of calendar. What, well, what exactly yes. is that? I worked on it. I started in March, 
And I was done at the end of August, and then the artist started, but he got sick he, okay. with his kidneys and had to go to the hospital twice. Wow. So we're just coming off press now, a beautiful wall calendar by Isaac, I-Z-A-K, not Isaac Mizrahi, I-Z-A-K, Zanu. He does all the skinny girls for Henry Dendles, just beautiful fashion. Okay. Although I have a dual site where 40% are male, we know that women buy the calendars. We just know that. Okay. So we have a wall calendar, and on certain days, a lot of them, because I'm so thorough, <laughs> um, you find out what's going on that day. But we also, for popular demand, ask for a, a planner. Oh, and we have the art running through the planner, too. And I have to send you one of each so you can see it, Kevin. Sure, and it's be just beautiful. They just came off press. We're sending them out now. Uh, they're on the cover of my website, astrologyzone.com, my homepage. And uh, they're beautiful. It's a girl with beautiful lips, <laughs> with lip gloss. Yeah, and, I'm actually looking at you know, like, blonde. You have photos of the uh, artwork Well, I asked the, the artist, I gave him PMS numbers, Pantone numbers, sure. to go with my logo, because I keep that right. up for quite a while, and it has to blend beautifully, you know. But And I worked with uh, Isaac to tell him what each sign was like, so he could draw um, these beautiful paintings. I remember it was an August day, and the phones were ringing, and it was a stressful day, and you know everything was happening, and I was trying to keep up. And Courtney, my assistant, came in, and I work in the living room. She works in her. <laughs> she sure. works in my office. I gave her my office, <laughs> and I sit in the living room. She said uh, Isaac's pen and ink drawings are coming through, Very and cool. he wants approval before he goes to color. So go on your email right now. And oh my gosh, it was like poetry. Yeah, they look through. really good. They're really cool, actually. Oh, the the elegance. Oh, gee, I think you can see them on Instagram under either traffic or okay. I Z A K. Uh, I think they put them up there, and uh, they're they're really special. So, um, and I'm writing the year ahead. You know what it is? I, each magazine I write for is not syndicated. They're all different. Interesting. And I had to write cover stories for everybody, and they all wanted something different. And, I, and then I have to write Astrology Zone, so I have to keep starting and stopping. So and the busy. rose petals <laughs> in your brain start sinking to the bottom of the ocean. The rose sure. petals are the facts. And if, if you can memorize the year, you can write a little faster. And then I have fact checkers. I mean, just on the calendar, I have two editors and a wow. proofer and an astrologer and somebody who knew Jewish holidays. I knew the Christian holidays. Wow. Interesting. She said, you have a Jewish holiday no one celebrates. I said, oh, my goodness, but you forgot one that everybody celebrates. Okay. That's, Thank God I have you. That's you know, cool. And, and we went through 14 versions when Sherry, my chief editor, and she works on Astrology Zone, saw that January was missing an A. We were ready to go to press. She said, we got to stop everything. We have to go through the entire... Every time we would find one tiny thing wrong, we sure. had to go through everything. Yeah, wow. But now we feel that we have it right. The A is in January. In the That's little box, me. not not on the top, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> but we, um, you know, we're very, very careful. Very, no. very careful. You know, so we want it the best it could be. Sure. I think it's uh, 1995 plus shipping. Some people have said... Gosh, the shipping sometimes is ten dollars. Yeah, when I go downstairs, we put it in cardboard so it won't bend. Beautiful right, right, right. white yeah, cardboard, I and I go to the clickety clack machine, and it's ten eighty to send from New York to California. It is what it is, and we don't mark it up. No, it, that's, it's, that's fair. So I'm going to be writing the year ahead. I'm I'm halfway through it. Sure. So stay tuned for that, and it will be on Kindle and on iPad as well. Perfect, so, Susan. Yeah. Well, I I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show uh -huh. and people can get kind of more information about you and your apps and your books and your other stuff at <laughs> astrologyzone.com. But I, again, I really appreciate you taking the time of your day to be on the show and I look forward to keeping in touch with you and seeing you in LA in January. Thank you so much. I can't wait to meet you in person. <laughs> Perfect. It'll be All right. fun. I yeah, promise. Exactly. All right. Well, have a good, have a good rest of your day and we'll talk soon. Okay. okay bye. Okay. Bye. 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit the show's website at buildingthefutureshow.com. Also check us out on Facebook at Building the Future Show and follow us on Twitter at Building Show. 
The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.